Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of Take Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and today we're going to do the second part of a two-part series on a, a machine evaluation. Uh, this particular machine is called an AHP Alpha Tig 200X. Now, one of the reasons that we're testing is because it is done through preliminary testing past our test. And when I say our test, this is a machine that is being offered as a starter or a beginner machine. Is it good enough for you? Yeah, so I just want to introduce uh, one of the series that we're going to do many, many of, and that is, is it Mr. Tig approved? Yeah, so we've already gone through a lot of the features of, of the machine. Part two is going to be testing it for aluminum welding. Uh, so this is a very low cost machine. I think right now you can find this machine anywhere from uh, um, $795 to $850, something like that. Very inexpensive. Uh, it's an ACDC unit, so you know that cost is very, very inexpensive. So will it perform? And the best way to tell if it's going to perform really is on aluminum, because most of the machines do a pretty good job on steel, stainless steel. But I'm, I'm going through some of the features of the machine, and it, it, it's a 115-220 machine meaning that it comes with this little adapter, so you can plug this in and run, uh, run it on household current. Now, what is the maximum amperage you're gonna get out of this machine when you do that? So I've, I've gone over to the, uh, to the cheat sheet that's provided with the machine. Uh, it's a little operator user, user manual. Um, when you're on 115, you can get, you could go as low as 10 amps and up to, um, looks like 150 amps. And when you plug it into 220, you'll get 10 amps up to 200 amps. Um, so we're going we're gonna to test those values. We've already done this on the steel portion of it, and it performed quite well. So now we're going to go ahead and set this machine up. I'm going to get my gear on. I'm going to do some very, very thin, and this is, uh, gosh, this is like 18 or 20 gauge aluminum. So I'm going to see if I can gear this thing down to be able to, to run this material and handle it. Uh, then I'm going to set it up with a little higher amps, and I'm going to run, a, a, this is a pretty, pretty major heat sink uh, of aluminum. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, but the reality behind it is that uh, it draws a lot of energy. So we're going to see if this machine will handle it. So let me get my gear on and we'll, uh, we'll set it up. Okay, to, to weld thin wall aluminum or 16 gauge, 18 gauge, even uh, 20 gauge, uh, my start amps, I've got it at the very lowest, which is 10 amps. Uh, the maximum that I'm going to use is probably somewhere between uh, 30 or 40 amps. So give yourself a little bit extra because you want that foot control to be somewhere in, in the middle of the pedal. So I'm giving it 50 to 60 amps. I'm not doing any pulsing at all. In fact, I'm going to go down here to the pulser, and instead of being on, it's going to be off. So no pulsing at all. I get to the end amps. When I taper off, this is very critical in thin wall material. I, I want to be able to taper off and not leave a low dished area or a crater crack. So I want it at 10 amps, which is the lowest this machine was designed. Uh, pulse frequency, doesn't matter. I'm not using any pulse. Pulse time on doesn't matter, it's off. Post flow, I'm gonna keep it at five seconds. Uh, AC balance, I've got it uh, tweaked over here just a little bit to the less cleaning portion of it. So you can see this is the balance wave, which really has a little bit way too much cleaning action. So set it over here and let's try it at that. Let's go down to the bottom knobs. My choice is a TIG torch. I'm gonna go on AC. I'm going to be on 2T, the pulser is off, and I'm using a foot control. So uh, let's start the machine up and see what it'll do.
Okay, now I had this machine set up, and I think I think I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. I don't exactly like the cleaning. I've got a little bit too much negative on it. And one way to tell is to take a look at the weld and look at the cleaning action right at the heat affected zone. And I don't have a lot of cleaning. Still a good weld, um, but this is part of knowing your machine and knowing how to adjust it. Okay, now uh, the last arc is not cleaning quite enough, so I introduced a little bit more cleaning on the function, and it certainly did that. It didn't take a lot of adjustment, but uh, doing a pretty good job. You can see the cleaning action is cleaning the heat affected zone a lot more. And you have to determine how dirty your material is. Okay, so you can see a, a, a big difference just in a slight adjustment at the cleaning knob. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it in that mode for for a few moments. Now this is pretty thin material, so it's easy to penetrate. It's not necessarily that easy to weld. It'll try to distort on you, but at least the machine it, it allows you to initiate the arc without blowing a hole. It allows you to get to the end of your weld, add a little extra filler and then pull out slowly with your foot control. So you'll notice that uh, I don't leave a crater crack. And if I decide to resume my weld, I'll just uh, remelt this little area right here and then take off again. But it really is critical on um, being able to taper off. So it's, it's doing the job. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the machine on uh, probably about 125 to 150 amps. Uh, and then I'm gonna run some, some pretty heavy duty aluminum. When I say heavy duty, eighth inch um, that you know that's uh, that's pretty heavy duty especially in this kind of a mass so let me change the knob over here all I'm going to do is change my amperage at this point okay now I, I put a 332 diameter tungsten in and uh, I'm running probably 150 amps uh, so it's running really clean, really controllable. This is my constant dabs, and you can see the cleaning action right along the edge of the liquid puddle. So, and I'm coming in at kind of a little bit of an angle, it just happens to be the position that I'm in right now. Okay, so I'm going to get to the end of the weld here. I'm going to add a little bit of extra filler. And I want to circle it and back up a little bit, back up a little bit, and back up on my foot control. And beautiful. It, it, it did pretty well. Okay, so in, in rating a machine, you know, the manufacturers always tell you something much higher than it really will do. Now, will this machine do a quarter of an inch or even a half an inch? You know, it's not going to do half-inch material. You could possibly preheat the daylights out of a part and be able to get it to, to melt. But the reality is, this is to me what's considered a one-eighth inch thick market, one-eighth inch thick aluminum. Uh, I've got plenty of mass here. It handled it very well, very easily. Could I do a quarter of an inch? Mm, maybe. It definitely would require preheat. Now, what I put in my torch for the second welds, it's a 1 8 inch diameter tungsten. I'm sorry, it's a 332 diameter tungsten. And I just use the, the laser tungsten. You're not going to use any more than 332 on here. In fact, most of the time you're going to want to use 1 16th tungsten. So that's the market that this fits. It's an intro machine. And it does a pretty good job. Um, I'm going to go back to part one where I did some steel. So you can do sheet metal, lap welds, fillet welds, and aluminum. So just know that we're, we're at the 1 8 inch market. Uh, the torch that I put on here is a 125 amp torch. And I welded it somewhere between 125 and 150. Now the torch will handle the 200 amps. It just won't handle it for very long periods of time. Now, you didn't buy this machine for its high end, I can assure you, because if you start using 200 amps all the time, 
you're probably going to step it up into a more industrial machine. So uh, anyway, that's the part of the technical uh, I just want to show you. Okay, the, now that I've shown you the technical portion of this machine, uh, I want to show you the components that come with this machine and what I like and what I dislike. Okay, now let's, let's recap this machine, and I want to go through every detail that comes with the machine, and let's call it stock. This is a stock machine, AHP uh, TIG 200X. Now, first of all, we talked about certain features on it. This machine is a, a 115-220 unit, single phase, so it comes with this adapter extension cord, and uh, that's pretty awesome to have that with you. Uh, you know, let's, let's take a look at the, the ground clamp, the cable itself. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty decent quality. Uh, so I would leave it on there. I wouldn't change it out. Uh, it'll do the job. Again, this market is an introduction market. If you want to get into uh, materials and hot rod building, things like that, this will do the job for you. Uh, <laughs> if you happen to get into trailer building or things like that, then this stick electrode holder and cable, it comes with it, so we're going to leave it with it. Um, anyway, it's, it's your choice whether you want to get into this process or not. Uh, I, I want to look at the, uh, the instruction manual. It's not great, but uh, we're going to redo something. Uh, you're going to see it in, in well.com. So uh, you can go through this, and it gives you some pretty decent instructions how to get started. Um, it talks about the parameters, voltages, and things like that. So, not bad at all. Uh, actually, the paper is pretty high quality, surprisingly. Now, this this little feature right here, it comes with the machine. If you want to attach this to your TIG torch, you can click it on off, or you can leave it in the 4T mode. Uh, this is this is that two percent of the time that if you have to get into a tight spot, and this is what you want to use instead of your foot pedal. So I'm going to keep that with this machine. Okay, now the, the foot pedal itself, it, it's right on the edge. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it the Mr. Tig approval. And the only reason I do that is because it does work pretty decent. Works just a little above average, but it will get the job done. And if I had a replacement for it, I would put it on there right now but I just don't have that. So we're going to keep that with this package. So it is, it's marginal. It may get changed at a later date. Now, let's talk about the TIG torch itself. This is a, uh, a TIG torch that's, um, you know, it's got the standard components on it. This is a, a 17 style TIG torch. Um, it's just not what I want to use for this machine. It's too big, it's too cumbersome, and you'll probably notice that it comes with the standard cups, you know, and uh, gosh, when you put that back cap on there, it makes it a big torch. So here's what I'm going to do with this TIG torch. And as far as the components, it's not something that I would probably ever use. So I'm going to get rid of those. Now, this is something <clears throat> you've got to be really concerned with. It's in, in no way is it something that I even call marginal. And it's, it's your argon regulator and flow meter. So when you, when you screw this into the bottle, you know, it does show you very well what the pressure is of your bottle. But when it comes over here to the fine increments, I can see that this is so cheaply built that the sheet metal is actually tweaked in here. So if it quits functioning, or it's not an if, it's when it quits functioning. Um, and it, that's going to happen. Uh, i, I got to change that out before I ever get started. It's, it's a critical function on the machine. So I'm going to take what I'm going to do with this one, and I'm going to set it right here just for the time being. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of it. Uh, it's just that bad. So if it didn't, you know, if it wasn't working before, it certainly isn't working now. Uh, Anyway, I want to change that out, and I want to show you some of the features that we do want to put with this machine. Okay, I want to introduce something to you. Uh, you're going to see this over and over again, but I've developed this Mr. Tig label, and this is a Mr. Tig approved label. So if I'm evaluating a machine like this AHP, uh, is it a good machine? Is it a bad machine? Well, there are certain features on it that I don't like. So what I'm doing is I'm offering those features incorporated 
into this machine. So I'm going to show you a couple of the features, one being the TIG torch. The TIG torch is a premium TIG torch. It's got a flexible head. It's got a gas lens in it, 12 and a half foot cable, but we have the adapter, and so you take off the old torch, put the new one on, it screws right on. Uh, secondly, we talked about the argon, or if you're using helium, or if you're using CO2 for some other application, you need a high quality argon regulator flow meter. So again, you could see when you screw this into the bottle, you're gonna get a, a good reading, how much uh, pressure's in the bottle, and then you've got this very fine increment flow meter. Now typically I run 15 to 20 CFH. It's in CFH, not liters per minute. Okay, now what we're gonna incorporate with this is, this is our 9 slash 20 GL. It's a gas lens kit. So you've got three different sizes of gas lens. You've got the right collets, collet bodies, tungsten. So when you get your machine, it's got everything correct. You're not going to have to go out and buy anything extra. So just know that this and this and this, when you combine it, if you, if you put it into a package, it's a heck of a lot cheaper bundling it than buying it individually. So that's what is going to happen in this machine. It's going to be completely bundled. And sure, it's going to increase the price, but it's not going to be considerable. Uh, by bundling it, you're going to save about 25%. Now, if you already have one of these type of machines, and you're gonna see that uh, not only this machine, but you're gonna see Eastwood machines and a lot of import machines have this same fitting on the front, need the same conversion. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna offer this as a bundle by itself without the machine. And you can watch the show notes, well.com has recently opened a store. So I just want you to know, buy this as a bundle. You can buy it individually, but just know that you're gonna save about 25%. Watch for this. If this isn't on your machine or you don't see it, then it's definitely not approved by Mr. Tig. So thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.